Okay. Welcome back to DWI's Community Podcast. My name is Cassia, and I will be hosting this episode alongside Sheridan. On behalf of DWI and the rest of the CYC, it is our pleasure to welcome Alex. Alex is a grade 11 student at Burlington Central High School. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining us today. No problem. I'm happy to be here, guys. <laughs> so I guess the first question I want to start off by asking you is if you were walking down the street and someone came up to you and said, who are you? How would you go about answering that question? Oh, my God. Who am I? OK, so <laughs> well, of course, I think you start off with like. I'm a person, I'm a human being. Uh, and then you could go, here's my age, right? And then you go like, here are my morals and values. That's immediately what I do. Like, my name's Alex, human being, I'm 16 years old. And then here's what I believe in, right? And things like that. And that's why I really resonated with CYC because that's what they really focus on is sort of what is your, how do you want to make an impact in the world based on what you believe? So that's what I really loved. And that's, that's how I'd answer that, right? It's just, who are you? Well, here's who I am, here's what I believe in. It's funny because a lot of people, when we ask that question, and it's something that we sort of work through in CYC about how you should actually answer that question, but a lot of people would be like, hi, my name's such and such, and I work at whatever, or hi, my name's Cassia, and I'm a third year student at Western, but that's not actually who you are. So yeah. if you could fill in the blanks and describe yourself, how would you describe yourself as? Describe myself, definitely confident, outgoing, uh, hardworking. And I think those are values that you definitely need um, in, a t in a day and age like this, for sure. And just being able to go, okay, here's who I am. And here's what I want to do. And even if you don't know what you want to do, you need to be able to figure that out, right? And so being able to be self-aware is a very, another, a very important thing as well. And being able to just sort of sit down and go, okay, like, who am I? Who do I want to be? And being able to figure that out. And so I've done a lot of that thinking. I do a lot of that sort of thinking um, quite often, actually. And um, it's just sort of who do I want to be? And it's this question of what are the values that you hold to yourself, right? So me, big thing for me is minimalism. I hold that very near and dear. Stoicism, things like that, being self-aware, being able to be self-centered, but not selfish, and be aware of, of others and sort of be in tune with other people. And of course, all that comes with like being happy and nice and everything like that, right? But that, it's more sort of um, deeper values and rooted. It's That's what it is. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that a lot of people in like high school and youth in general should just have like that outlook. So that's great. Um, could you share a little bit about your journey and um, where you are today from your journey? Uh, yeah, so just like in relation to like CYC or just sort of in general? You could do both, honestly. I'd love to hear both. Yeah, okay. So uh, CYC actually all started back in September uh, when Central hosted like the Splay Day event. Uh, Need to be why I was part of that. And that's where I actually met Shannon. And so for my through my school, I do a lot of the theater tech stuff. So I'm a sound guy. So I'll stand behind the board and I make sure everything sounds pretty. And so I do that for our musicals and our plays and all that. And so I was involved with the play day I helped set up and everything, the stages, all the audio, all the sound, lighting, everything like that. And I was really just there the whole day. I'm going to be honest, I didn't do a whole lot. I just sort of stood there while everyone else did all the cool stuff. But at least I was there, right? And I remember one of my teachers comes up to me and he's like, hey, you know, this, this lady's here. For, she's from DBY. You should go talk to her. I was like, sure. So I go, I say, hey, I'm Alex, how's it going? She's like, what do you think of the event so far? And I was like, well, honestly, here's what's going really well. Uh, here's what we didn't do well. And here's what we could fix in the future because she was looking to do it again. And I said, here's the five things we did great. Here's what you need to change. It's not going very well. Here's how you could do that. It was really, like, I was pretty honest. I was like, this is great and all, but we got to change this. <laughs> and she loved that. She's like, Alex, you need to come to this community event in November. So I said, sure. So I showed up and I said, hey, how's it going? How's it going? And uh, I sat through the whole event. And I listened, fantastic speakers. It was incredible. And I listened to the whole event. And then afterwards I went up, she gave me the VIP pass. I felt very important. And she sends me up and I'm in this like the after party event and I was talking to everyone and just sort of making my way around the room. And at the end, Shannon goes, Alex, I really like you. I think we need to interview you on our podcast. And I was like, sure. But what about? And she was like, well, through the whole night, like you were here the whole day. Right. And you were just consistent and you were here the whole time. And that's what it is. Right. And I sort of thought about it as I was on my way home. 
And I was like, yeah, that's what I did. I was just confident in myself. I didn't really care what others thought of me. I was going out, I was talking to everyone, making sure that I let them know what I wanted to talk to them about, right? And it, not in a selfish way, but like, I really like what you said here. Here's what I think about that. Let's have a conversation, right? And being unafraid to do those sort of things. And again, that comes to self-confidence, self-esteem, things like that. And then I was just consistent the whole time. That's what it's been for me, really the whole time. I look back at um, all the way to grade nine when I got involved with my school. And it was just consistently, I showed up every single day for like five months doing the sound. And all I did was hit the stop and start button for them for like two hours. And then now this year it's geared up to like, I'm running it for them, right? And so that was a really big thing and just sort of being consistent and being able to stick with it and being uh, self-aware, self-confident, things like that, right? Um, so that's really how I got involved with CYC. And then you said um, just about me in general too. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so um, born and raised in Burlington, really my whole life. <laughs> um, haven't really gone anywhere else, but it's um, through my life. There's been a lot of different uh, things you have to overcome, just like everyone, right? You have family troubles, you have school troubles, and through all that, I sort of realized that again, like I'll say it again, self confidence and consistency are sort of key to this, and those are really hard values to build around yourself. And so sometimes people don't necessarily have the parental support. I was very lucky. And I was able to have the parental support and support from teachers and friends and such around me. But at a certain point, it really does take a time where you're sort of sitting down and going, okay, like, what am, who do I want to be and where do I want to go? And for me, that really came from minimalism and stoicism, right? Where you literally just sit down with a piece of paper and you write out, like, who do I want to be? And then you list all these things. And you're like, okay, well, how can I, how can I get there? And you sort of figure that out. Like, what are the, what are the day, things I can do on a daily basis that get me to where I am then or where I want to be? And that's really what's got me here to this point now is like, I've really threw all those points in my life and you can reflect. Like I wasn't doing this when I was like 10 years old, right? But it was, you're, you're sort of thinking back and reflecting like, okay, well, what I do that? Okay, well, what did I, what should I have done? And it's not, oh, well, what I've done to change that. It's, well, I did that and it happened, but what can I do now to move forward in a more positive and progressive way, right? But that's a lot of things most people don't do. And that's why I really love being at that event that day. And I was just like, wow, these people are speaking to what I believe in. This is incredible. And I just was, I was just talking to everyone. And I was like, this is what we really need to be preaching to young people. It's like, think about who you are, think about what you want to be, and then sort of reflect on that. Go like, how can I move on and move forward? Right. And that's just a little bit about me and my sort of like um outlook and my philosophy is just like think of the things and the values that you hold close to you and then figuring out a way to put those into your daily practice and, and everyday life consciously or subconsciously uh, is really an important thing. It's funny because you mentioned consistency. And I think when Shannon called me and said, you'll never guess who I met. I just met this boy named Alex and he is so amazing. The biggest thing that I got out of her during that conversation was that Alex stood with her the entire play day event <laughs> and did not leave and stayed there that was the biggest takeaway and then even after I was talking to her about Youth Inspired Community Day she's like you know I gave Alex the VIP pass he showed up and he stayed right until the very last minute and she was so impressed with your consistency and that is such a good thing to have at like I'm assuming you're 16 17 yeah. okay like I think a lot of adults don't even per se know that so that is a very mature quality to have and I think it's very cool that you pick up on it and Shannon also picked up on it so that is very cool but after attending Youth Inspire Community Day what would you say is your biggest takeaway and following up to that what would you tell youth that didn't attend like what would be your sort of message to them for the future yeah well, what really stuck with me was uh, Miranda Am's her her speech, her part of it, and she touched on a lot of things that I I found really important to me. She really talked about being able to find your north star, and your north star is essentially the way home, right? The way that you're, no matter where you are, no matter what path you go down, and how lost you feel, you're all that's your north star. You're always going to be able to sort of guide and back that direction, and that really comes back to like I said earlier, your core values, and that's what really spoke to me about the event is I really love the fact that her and all the other speakers really hammered home, like figure out who you are 
It's not an easy process. It certainly never ends. It's a constant, ever-changing and evolving process. But like figure out who you are and how you want to act and be and behave and then how you can move forward. And I really love that. And I really love the fact that they spoke to the youth about that. That was my favorite part of it. So many young people don't hear the message, right? And it's just, they just keep going and they don't realize that like, you got to figure this stuff out. Oh, what do I want to do when I grow up? Well, I don't know. Well, who do you want to be? And that's the bigger question. So not what do you want to do? It's who do you want to be? And that was my favorite part. Like if I could tell people that weren't there, that would be it. Like consistency in figuring out who you want to be. And that's not like, okay, I'm going to think about this day for two hours and write it down. And it's like, come back every month and sort of figure out who you want to be and just figuring out in your life what is structurally there for you and what you structurally don't have. Some people have really great parental support and some people don't. There's not much you can change about that. Some people have really great friends. Some people don't. But there's definitely something you can change about that. Some people have really bad relationships with technology. You can fix that. Some people have mental health issues. You can work through steps to change that, right? That's what I would say is stick with the things that you know you can change to make you better and follow and take you down the path that you want to go down. That's a very good message. I really like that. And that sort of answered both the questions and one, what your biggest takeaway is, and then <laughs> what you would tell other youth who didn't attend. That's really funny. You answered that question very, very well. <laughs> um, you did also kind of say this, but is there anything you wish you would have told yourself that you've now learned that you would like to share? Definitely. Like if I could go back just three or four years and just tell myself one thing, it'd probably be to just don't give up. Don't quit. I look back and I've definitely quit on a few things I should not have quit on and just kept going. But again, that comes back to the consistency part. And it takes a while for people to realize that. And some people never figure it out. I've been very fortunate to figure it out at a young age that you need to be consistent and show up in what you do. And no matter if you're just standing there the whole time, holding the door open or whatever, at least you're there and you're showing up the entire time. And that's really what it is. No matter what you want to do, um, no matter, even if you don't want to do it, sorry, you just need to show up and you just need to do it. Uh, I quit on a few things. I've even quit on myself in the last year uh, on things I definitely should not have quit on, but it's really just keep going with it. Eventually it will come if you just keep showing up and it may feel like it never will come. It may take weeks or months or years for it to finally pay off, but at some point the work you put in will show, but you just need to actually do the work in order to do it. And just starting to do something for five minutes a day, just to jumpstart that process and do the five minutes every single day. Well, eventually that's going to snowball into an hour, two hours, right? And you, you build that up over time. So I would just tell myself, stick with it, but just start to do it in the first place. That's a really good message. And I know you said there's a few things that reflecting back on that you quit on that you definitely shouldn't have quit on. So this is a little bit of a challenging question and feels free to take some time to respond. But if someone told you, you had 12 hours left in your life, what would be your biggest regret? Or do you have any? Because maybe you don't have any. But what would you say? Man, that is tough. <laughs> The only reason I asked that question is because I was asked it in an interview, given 30 yeah. minutes to think of an answer and had two minutes to answer. Oh. So ever since that, it's just stuck with me because it's such an interesting question and everyone has such different responses yeah. to it that it's one of my favorite questions now. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people will gravitate towards like the little things. Be like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. But I feel like that's sort of trivial. Um, wow. Jeez. if you want I can share how I answered the question and to me my whole philosophy in life and what I live by is that everything happens for a reason and everything that has happened to me has taught me something whether that's good or bad I've learned from it and so how I answered that question in the moment is that I don't have any regrets and yes okay there's little things here and there but Overall, there's nothing that I think every single day, oh, I wish I did this different. Oh, I wish I did this different. Like, yes, in the moment, oh, I wish I would have stayed in touch with my one friend from grade four and not move schools. But again, I can't control that. So it's something very little. But to me, everything has shaped me and it's con tr contributed to who I am today, what I know, what I've learned, what 
I've found my purpose in life is and what I hope to become and who I hope to be. And so that's how I answered that question. So I don't know if you would answer it any differently or do you have any insight now that I've shared that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I 100% agree with that for sure. Like if you look back and there's nothing that every day you think I'm like, oh man, I, I, I should have done that differently. You don't really have many regrets. Um, the one thing I actually did think of while you were speaking, um, I used to dance. I was a dancer for a lot of years. And then I quit all of a sudden because I wasn't like finding it fun anymore. Uh, but that's because it got really hard all of a sudden. But I didn't put in the work to sort of push past the point where it was hard to get to the point where I was great. So I stopped. And am I happy I stopped? Of course I am because it allowed me to do other things and explore other areas. Like if I had kept dancing, it takes up all your time. I wouldn't have been involved in my school. I wouldn't have gotten a part-time job. I wouldn't, right? So there's a lot of things I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have been able to do that I have now because I've had the time. But looking back, that's definitely one thing I would not have I would not have, I might not have, I would have considered more in terms of quitting is like looking back and going, okay, you're not enjoying this now, but you did enjoy it at some point. And will you enjoy it again? Because now it's just getting really hard. And that's when a lot of people stop and they, and they quit something is when it gets really hard. And so it's just telling yourself like, okay, it's really hard now, but it will get better at some point. If you just keep pushing past the point where it's hard, it'll probably get better. So that's, that's, the thing that I would probably change or just I would consider the the idea of quitting it more but I don't wake up every day and go oh man I should have done that because certainly there's things in my life now that wouldn't be in my life um but if I had to do one thing it'd probably be that for sure so here's another question sorry Sharon I'm going off script right now but another <laughs> question I was asked during this crazy interview process is if you were told that, again, you had 12 hours left to live, what would you do in those 12 hours? Would you go back to dancing and do something to do with dance? Or do you think now that you've sort of learned about different things and explored different paths, you would do something completely differently in those 12 hours? I think this is going to sound super corny, but I would find I would go into like a nice area, whatever it is. I really like first in the Bronte Creek. I live near Bronte Creek, so I love going down there in the summer all the time. So I'd go down there, I'd find a nice spot and I would just, I would bring a book writing like a pen and I would just sit down and I'd reflect and I'd go, okay, like, what have I done? What have I been proud of? What could I have changed? Things like that. And just have a reflection, a time of reflection and just think back and go, okay, like, am I happy with how I've lived so far? What is next for you and how do you plan on getting there? Next for me, I think next for me is really taking the time to ask what I want to do, which sounds really weird, but I'll explain in a second. Looking at my life now, I've done, a, I'm doing a lot of things where it's doing things for other people. I go to work and I do things for other people. I go to school and then, well, I'm, I'm doing that for me, but I'm also doing it for other people. But then I go to after school clubs and a lot of the time that's for other people. And that's great. But then I also need to go, okay, like, what do I want to do to make myself better so that I can be better at those things? Um, so definitely sort of in the, in the near future, I'm going to be sitting down and going, what are the things that I need to do personally, whether it's physically or mentally or changing something about my life um, to sort of curate to what I want to do in the future. Um, and that goes in a number of ways. It goes to school as well. It goes into career. It goes into all those different aspects. Um, but in general, just sitting down and going, okay, like what's next? And then how can I change my life now to make myself better so that I'm more equipped to deal with those things? I like that answer. It's funny because you mentioned like sort of you do a lot of things for other people and sometimes it's just carving out that time for yourself and you need to take care of yourself. You need to treat yourself. And in, I don't know, two months ago at the beginning of September, I impulsively applied to a position at my university and I was like, Sheridan knows all about this, but I was like, there's no way I'm getting in. Like, this is just, this is where all these interview yeah. questions came from. And 160 people and they're only choosing 14. There's no way I'm going to make it through this process. And every day it was seven days in a row of step by step by step. So you'd get the phone call or the email the night of for the next day. And when I applied, I, it just popped up on my Instagram. And I was like, that's such a cool opportunity. Like, let me go and explore this. Never, never, never thinking it would go anywhere. And I've been volunteering with Dare to Be Youth a lot. And I guess I didn't really take into time to think about the consideration of what would happen if I actually made it. Because if you make it past this 
week of almost death because it's you're starting school and now you're worrying about all these different things and physical and answering questions and you're getting drilled but after that there's three weeks of five to ten from monday to friday and 9 a.m. to almost 7 p.m. on Saturdays, and then 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sundays, where you have to go through this course to learn to get certified. And it's like a Red Cross course. It's an EMR course, but I never really considered what happens if you actually get there, because I was just almost in denial, like, oh, there's no way. And every stage, people would, like, dwindle, and you'd see, like, people that you had met not be there anymore. And all of a sudden, I got the phone call, and I was like, what like and I I don't know if I was more in shock or more like somewhat happy that I got this position but during those it might even have been four weeks to be honest I don't remember but I had to take time off from everything and which is something I'd never really done before so it was sort of navigating the whole process of okay everyone at the CYC now can't be dependent on you because you're no longer there so it was not only communicating that I'm no longer there but it was also what happens when I'm not there and I've always been a big volunteer and I love volunteering but it took me that to learn that what happens when you don't like when you take some time for yourself and don't do stuff for other people so that's very interesting that you've learned that at what four years before I did (laughs) yeah that's something that is very important so I don't know Sharon if you have anything else to add or um so I guess you mentioned and you sort of alluded to how you have decided that Alex you want to join the CYC and continue with us on that journey but what exactly are you hoping to achieve or what do you wish to see throughout this journey of joining I definitely do want to be able to make a positive impact on those around me and just being able to spread the message that I shared with you here today and just sort of helping other people my age understand like you know you have time to figure it out a lot of people think a lot of people think you got to figure it out right away it's like no you don't you have time to figure it out you have time to sort of think of who you are and who you want to be and go through that process but I really just want to help others that's really my big thing right like I'm Oh, sorry, my dogs are going nuts. <laughs> just, <laughs> just wait a second. I think someone's home. We'll just wait a second. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yes, positive change, positive impact. Um, I definitely do want to make a positive impact on those around me. A lot of people that are my age and sort of within a few years um, don't know, don't have an, an idea of the path they want to go down or what they want to do or the person they want to be, things like that. And I think I certainly don't have that figured out either whatsoever. Like I say that and I'm like, I still don't know. I'm still figuring it out. But if I can help other people figure it out, that'd be great. Right. And just being able to help other people is something I really love to do. Seeing others grow and change and learn is really what I love. That's a, that's a great way to answer that question. Awesome. Um, well, that concludes this episode of DWI's community podcast. On behalf of the rest of the CYC and DWY, we would like to thank you for supporting youth and creating an impact in your community. It takes a village to support and empower the leaders of tomorrow, and we can't make an impact alone. So we really appreciate everyone in the community who steps up to support us. So thank you, Alex, for coming on. We appreciate it. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. I love this. This is a fantastic opportunity. Thank you.